Alrighty, uh, let's get the timer started, and we're now going to do the vlog t uh, uh, timestamp. It is 8 hours and 20 minutes into the day of Saturday, December 14th, 2013, that's right. Uh, unfortunately, the wee hours of, uh, the wee hours of uh, Friday night, uh, around 11 o'clock, I was supposed to start the vlog then, the weekend vlog, because this is the first segment of the weekend vlog, this is the opening segment. Uh, <laughs> but what happened is that the time just kind of sort of slipped away and, uh, uh, working on a product here. Uh, I'm trying to learn my Greek more, and one of the things that helps you learn any language is, uh, more exposure to the language. So, uh, just the way I've, I've sort of started to learn my Japanese, uh, by surfing the Japanese websites, I've decided to do the same thing here with, uh, with Greek. So I'm now starting to surf the Greek websites and uh, find interesting channels that I like. Particularly, I'm looking for uh, the Greek vloggers, if you will. Uh, <coughs> looking for a Greek version of Gen X Pen. Uh, I don't know if I've, I've actually found a couple of them. I found a couple. Actually, I shouldn't say I don't know if I found a couple. I found a couple of, of Greek vloggers. Uh, the question is, can I find more? And uh, you know. Oh. In increase my exposure to Greek. This weekend, or actually not this weekend, <laughs> in a few hours, I'm ending my day right now. Uh, this is this is the uh, opening segment for the BTS vlog, for the weekend BTS vlog, but it's also the uh, uh, the end of the day. It's sort of, uh, I'm going to go to bed after this, so... It's been a long day. It's been uh, at least a minimum of 12 hours. To give you an idea of uh, of what it's like at the research desk here, uh, if you've ever traveled for eight hours plus, you know, by car, you know how at the end of the day, at the end of the uh, at the end of the trip, you get out of the car uh, and your legs are a little weak, uh, <clears throat> and you feel like you're completely buzzed. You know, <laughs> your capacity to walk in a straight line is uh, impaired. Let's put it this way. Uh, this is the same thing here. Uh, my level of exhaustion is right up there. It's been a long day of studying. Uh, and, and this is sort of what, what, hap what happens. Basically, on a daily basis, I end up like, like, like this. And every time, if you, ever, if you look through the videos and you see when I'm vlogged at the end of the end of the day my eyes don't stay open and uh, I'm sort of slouched back like this I guess most of the energy that I have is kind of gone uh, oh, uh, the kitchen diner is almost ready I was able to work on a lot of the editing stuff that I was that I was trying to get done I got a lot of the editing stuff done I'm going to be trying to with the transitions. I, I tried out the transitions a little bit uh, already. I put it up in one video. I looked at it. It's okay. The transitions are okay. Uh, rolling in the uh, video comments, the video response was okay. It could be better. I mean, the, the editing could be better in that. There's always room for, for improvement. But uh, you know, there's, a, there's a, in the first time you do something, it's not going to come out spectacular. If it comes out okay for the first time. Then that's good. That's because you've you've stepped forward. You've done the first time, and the next time is to sit down and work on it and get it better. That's kind of one of the reasons why I'm doing what I'm doing here. Is is, is you're learning. This is a learning process. This is how I learn how to produce TV shows, how to produce uh, the uh, the science series that I want to produce. So uh, it, it's not it's not a bad thing, and it, it, even if I make mistakes at it. <laughs> The thing is, there's going to be a lot of mistakes. It's not. It's not going to be that there's not going to be a lot of mistakes. There are going to be a lot of mistakes. Uh, but but that's kind of the way things go. The kitchen diner is working very well. I still have more organizing work to do in there. And uh, but I should be able to do a uh, test shoot that I will include in the BTS vlogs for next week. So uh, hopefully that will work out. It, it looks like it's working out. Uh, and in other words, the, the, the work is getting done, it's, it's, what I've done, and this is what I did, uh, I did it over one day, 
I completely tore everything out and reorganized the entire uh, kitchen diner so that there's a lot more space now. Now things have to be just reorganized again so that uh, I can improve the functionality of the space. So what, uh, if I should be able to finish that Monday, Tuesday. If I can get it done Monday, Tuesday, uh, I think I should be able to get in, into that vlog. Uh, we'll see what happens. It all depends on what ends up happening with my sleep. I've done a large chunk of the work, uh, the pre the pre-production work for the next episode of Beauty and the Geek. I don't know if I'm going to be able to film tonight and tomorrow. Uh, this this later on today and tomorrow. It de really depends on how much time I have because I'm going to be going out. I'm uh, I'm going to my parents' house. Uh, I'm going to stay overnight and then go to church in the morning, uh, early in the morning with my dad. So, uh, and that will be sort of the Greek part of my weekend. I spend a large chunk of my time on the weekends doing Greek, uh, improving my Greek. So, we'll see what happens uh, with the Beauty and the Geek. If 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 there is enough time to sort of squeeze that in, then I will do that in terms of the filming. Uh, if I'm not if I'm not too tired. Uh, but if I am too tired, then I'll leave it till Monday. Mon Monday will start the. Uh, uh, I sh I'll be able to uh, get uh, the next episode of Beauty of the Geek uh, to the uh, uh, studio, shoot it, and then do the uh, editing for it. Anyways, our time was almost up. Well, we got about a minute left, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, I'm tired. I'll see you in a couple hours to give you the next segment, to do the next segment. Alrighty. Hey, take it easy. It's time to do the last segment, and this segment here, uh, I should say is not necessarily the last segment. This is going to be... <laughs> this is a YouTube survey, the Neuromon YouTube survey from Alex Day. And it's a very short one, so I think it's going to remain in here the way it is. Uh, we'll see how things end up working out. Uh, let's see here. It says here, here are the questions. There's, there's five of them. Uh, what? What's your biggest fear? Well, I think the big, my biggest fear. This is the common to everybody else. Is the biggest fear is my biggest fear is death. You know, no one wants to die. <laughs> uh, even though, and here's the thing, is even though uh, I'm in a religion that offers Im immortality, that says you're going to live eternally, uh, no one knows what, I don't, no one knows what the other side is like or how it's going to be. So there's a bit, a bit of a fear that you don't want, but you don't want what you have to, to disappear or to be nothing. And uh, <laughs> this fear of the unknown, uh, which is also one of the biggest fears uh, uh, is quite daunting. So that sort of leads to the, the the fear of death. But the thing is, is that this is where the irony comes in. Is that my job uh, as an open explorer is to sort of test my my lead, my my fears, to test my fear of the unknown and go into the unknown. But in a what I consider or think at the time as a relatively safe manner. And as I say, relatively safe because, well, <laughs> you can't, if you're going into the unknown, you can't guarantee that it's safe. It is Monday, December 16th, and it is time to do uh, the next BTS vlog. So let's get started with the time and date stamp. It is. Five hours and 40 minutes into the day of Monday, December 16th, 2013. If you're wondering what happened to uh, uh, Saturday and Sunday, uh, from what I can remember, <laughs> what I can remember, uh, I, kind of, I was doing a lot of work. I basically re-edited uh, the uh, December 10th and 11th vlog. Oh. I'm going to re-upload it in a few minutes. 
that sort of pushed things back a little bit. I've been working on some of the editing techniques, and even though I had put out the uh, 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 10 and 11, uh, I didn't, when I watched it, I didn't think it was good enough, so I've gone back, I've re-edited it, re-edited it, and uh, I'll be putting it up back up again in a few minutes. Uh, I'm not taking down the old one. Uh, as I said, this is basically like a lab book. And you don't delete your mistakes. You put everything up there and uh, it serves as a record, as a, la as a log, uh, as, it, as it should be as a log uh, for the research. So, as I said, you're watching behind the scenes of a real researcher. Uh, I am a scientist. That uh, When I put up these vlogs, they're supposed to be as uh, raw as possible. Uh, I've been trying to sort of uh, look and see if I can make them more appealing to people who aren't used to uh, uh, documentaries. I mean, if you're a person who's used to documentaries and like this type of stuff, then that's not a problem. But there, the, the number of people who, who, who are like this, who can sit and watch documentaries for hours, are, are relatively few. Uh, so, in order to try to sort of increase the, the appeal of the channel and the show itself, oh, and the show itself is is maybe if I I was sort of thinking maybe if I re-edited things, I could sort of cut out some of the uh, not like cut out but sort of break up the uh, the dryness of the uh, of uh, the vlog. So it's more uh, I don't know. <laughs> it's more appealing to a wider a wider array of audience. But it was because there are people who like vlogs, who really aren't people who aren't want, don't watch vlog documentaries, but they like vlogs. The question is, uh, I know with the with YouTube, uh, five minutes, excuse me, uh, five minutes is a long time, and the thing is, how do you get someone to watch a half hour show? Uh, I looked at uh, seeing shows like uh, Duck Dynasty. Um, and other reality shows, and the thing is, is that what I noticed they've done is they've broken up. The, it, it, the, the there's a lot of talking the way there is here. There's a lot of discussion. There's not really a lot of action. But what they've done is they've broken it up so that it's in a more appetizing, more palatable uh, uh, presentation. So the question is, can I do the same thing here? I don't think. Um, the edit, the first edit of uh, of uh, the, the the December 11 and uh, December 10 and 11 vlog did it. I re-edited it. I I think the flow is better than it was the first one. So I'm gonna re-upload that and uh, we'll go from there. Uh, we'll see what happens. We'll see how the uh, this is sort of an, uh, an issue that I've got to start working on. I've got to work on the flow of what's going on, and then also start bringing in. Uh, components like uh, YouTube tags, uh, video responses, and another, 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 other, uh, another, another, mm, and other things like that. When you don't have a break on the weekend, it kind of gets rough. Uh, yeah. So basically, uh, what happened Saturday? Saturday, I started at one o'clock in the morning, and then Sunday, I started around 2 o'clock in the morning to 3 o'clock in the morning. Today, I started uh, around 4. So, there is the definite shift in the sleep schedule. I don't know where it's going. I have, I, I rarely ever do have, have any idea where things are going. Right now, I know things are in flux, that they are changing. I know at some point in time, it does settle into a particular pattern. It could stay like that for a while and then start to change again. So right now, my sleep schedule is in flux. It's changing. Where it's going to and where it's going to actually land for the next two to three weeks, I have no idea. It, we'll sort of see where it ends up. I know that uh, in a few uh, in a few hours, I will be going food shopping. So the vlog for um, for today for for the sixteenth and, and, and the seventeenth, right? Yeah, for the sixteenth and the seventeenth, the vlog. The BTS vlog for the 16th and 17th is the first The first uh, part of the vlog is going to be food shopping, and it's not going to be at night, it's going to be during the day. Matter of fact, it's probably about, but between 10 and 11 o'clock in the morning, 
uh, I'll be doing the first vlog uh, for uh, 16th and 17th. Or I should say the first segment, not the first vlog. Uh, I did some work, uh, I said, primarily at the editing desk. I finished up the cleaning for the kitchen diner. I'm working on the next the menu for the next two to three weeks. I'm working on that. That's why I'm going to food, go food shopping. Is if I have to work on the menu for the kitchen diner for the next two to three weeks. Uh, what else is there? Well, I'll leave this for now because there's not enough time to finish the thoughts in 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 in, in this segment. So uh, I will do one more segment and. Uh, so I will see you immediately in the next segment. All right. Uh, so here, this leads to the next question here. And it does fit. How did you find out Santa wasn't real? Well, here's the bizarre part. Uh, I never celebrated Christmas the way everybody else celebrated Christmas. Uh, I'm an Eastern Christian. Eastern Christians didn't celebrate uh, Christmas with Santa Claus. Eastern, uh, Eastern, Eastern Christians celebrated Christmas with Christ. You know, the birth of Christ. It's the nativity. It was basically a birthday. And Santa Claus comes along as a bonus. So, basically, while everybody has just Christmas in December to December 25th and everything's all over and everyone goes back to work on the 26th again, uh, if you're Eastern, Eastern Christian... Your Christmas lasts from de December 1st all the way to uh, January 20th. Right? So you get you get basically two months of Christmas if you're Eastern Christian. If you're a Christmas person, you need to be East Eastern Christian because you get two months of Christmas. <laughs> uh, and in that, you uh, actually in a couple of days we are celebrating, because we do a lot of celebrating because we're Greek, with a lot of food, uh, and we're selling St. Nicholas in a couple of days. St. Nicholas is Santa Claus. It's Santa Claus. Right, Saint Claus or Klaus is Nick Klaus. So Santa is Saint and Nick Klaus, Saint Nicholas. So Santa Claus was real. And if you believe in the Eastern Orthodox tradition, the Eastern Christian tradition, you know that Santa Claus isn't dead, that he's still alive. The soul lives on. And I have do have some evidence about this, and, and I will be doing an insta vlog on modern mythology and show how myth, the modern mythology really doesn't understand what's going on in history. Uh, to bring back that saints are real, and that as long as a saint is real and still alive, then Santa Claus is real. <laughs> he was real and still is real. The question is, does he go out and drive around in the sleigh? Well, that's the legend, and that's uh, something for another time. Uh, I view. I view Santa Claus and the Santa Claus Christmas as the miracle of Christmas. The gift that Santa Claus gives to us is Christmas itself. Because many years ago in the 1800s, if it wasn't for Santa Claus coming around in the United States, created by some guy, by some guy Coca-Cola or Macy's, uh, then Christmas would have been long gone. People like Christmas because of Santa Claus. And Santa Claus is the icon, is the gift of Christmas itself. Uh, if that wasn't there, Christmas would have died out in, in the 1800s and we would not be celebrating Christmas today. Well, the average person wouldn't be celebrating Christmas today. We'd be doing something else. We'd be having a winter festival. We'd be saying happy holidays and there would be no Christmas. And that's what's happening now is that we're, we're getting to a point where uh, we're, we're, we're removing the identity of Christmas from Christmas. Now we say happy holidays. And everybody on, on YouTube, they're falling to the same thing. Whether they're Chris, Christians or not, whether they celebrate Christmas, Christmas or not, they're no longer saying Merry Christmas. They're saying happy holidays. They're getting rid of their traditions. It's no longer Christmas. It's now holiday traditions. No longer Christmas traditions anymore. I mean... If this is the case, then what's the point of celebrating something that you don't care about anymore? I mean, I care about it, but the thing is, if you don't care about it, if you don't, if it's all holidays for you, then why celebrate it anymore? You know, just go to work, make some money, and uh, live your life like that. Um, back. Uh, I just needed to check a couple things, and as per usual. Uh, <laughs> 
It took a bit longer than I expected to come back. Uh, I wanted to see uh, how many seconds I've done so far to see, how, to see whether or not I'm on track. I needed to do a little bit more or whatever. And I found out that uh, there is a, uh, a sufficient, uh, there was a sufficient def def uh, deficiency in the segments. So I've decided that uh, I'm going to do this segment here and then the following segment it, it, which will be interspaced between these segments, these segments will be the YouTube survey, to, uh, uh, the Naramon or Alex Day uh, YouTube survey for 2013. So, anyways, uh, over the weekend, uh, I've begun watching more and more uh, um, uh, uh, my IPTV, uh, and the two shows I've sort of, sort of been watching uh, on my Recess channel. I have a channel that's specifically for recess, and sometimes I need to do that just sort of uh, as I'm working. I need to sort of take the ga the the the, the uh, foot off the gas. In other words, I can't be going full speed all the time, and I need to sort of to sort of uh, relax a little bit. But the thing is, is that I've never really gotten into adult TV too much, and I'm talking about. Uh, uh, you know the regular shows that adults watch on, on, on you know, like uh, uh, with it. a lot of people watch dramas. They watch cop dramas and so on and so forth uh, on TV. The, the, the various different shows like that. I think with it, CSI stuff like that. I don't really know what the show. I don't. I know that it shows, but uh, was it the CSI? There's um, Murdoch Mysteries. There's a whole bunch of them out there. Uh, there. Oh uh, well, yeah, Person of Interest. Anyways, uh, uh, people ask me why I don't like those shows. I don't get into those shows too often. And I said, because I'm mostly watching the kids' shows. I'm mostly watching Disney, Nick. Uh, and now on uh, YouTube, I'm watching uh, Bertelli and Katie's Mama. And the reason why I watch these shows is that they're really, they're, they're, they're a... They're a break from the research that I that, uh, that a lot of times that I'm do, a lot of times that I'm doing because uh, as I'm doing the research, I'll give an example. If you go to do uh, research in quantum physics, you find out you go into the history of quantum physics. You go into the history of physics. You'll inevitably run into the Nazis. When you run into the Nazis, you look at the Nazi scientists. You run into basically uh, a lot all the uh, nastiness that the world has to offer. And the thing that, that and, and the thing is. If you follow that branch, and this is what happens with Random Rock, you do follow the different branches of research, you, you know, different areas of, different directions of research, uh, not necessarily all specifically related to, not all specifically just science, but it's research in general, trying to find information to things that you may not necessarily know about. In other words, you're pushing the edge of your understanding. And so, understanding why the Nazis were so good at what they did, in terms of the science, leads you into an, an invariably realizing that a lot of the American scientists that came from, from Nazi Germany, that there is a huge correlation between American science and the uh, science of Nazi Germany. As a matter of fact, one could say that, and this is based on the research, that you have a, a continuation of Nazi science uh, in the United States uh, in the American research program, that at, at the end of the world, at the end of World Two, there was an agreement between the Nazis and the United States that they would become our allies and fight against the Soviets. And so, what happens is that it, it, it would sound unusual, and this is sort of gets into the conspiracy theory. In other words, you would say, "Oh, yeah, the conspiracy theorists are crazy. Uh, Hitler and Himmler didn't survive. You know, they were all you know executed and so on and so forth." And then you realize that. You look at that the people in history have had doubles, and that history is often false. That there's a lot of false stuff in history that we don't know. That this is simply simply designed for public consumption. And we go in and see what the reality is. The reality from what was actually happening and to what to what we've been told would happen is actually something completely different. Uh, and so it does give some degree of credibility to the conspiracy the conspiracy theorists, but it's not is not necessarily what the conspiracy theorists expect it to be. It's not all one people all sitting in a room together going, ha, 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 I'm gonna take over the world. More often than not, it's more of a a, a collusion of interests, of mutual interests. And only when 
the interest of mutual, uh, the interest is mutual. Do they, in some ways, work out a begrudging agreement? In other words, yes, they're working together. These interested parties in a collusion, in a in a conspiracy, but they're not necessarily agreeable to each other. And there's no illusion that once this interest is over, that the interest of the self is always going to be paramount. And so what happens, even during the collusion, even during the conspiracy, there's always other aspects of it that are working, uh, of the, t the various different conspirators, that were actually working against, against each other at the same time. So, uh, this sort of leads you to sort of have a disillusionment to when you watch these, these TV shows, these so-called adult shows, and ask the question, well, why are these adult shows considered to be so superior to the kids' shows? Well, they're more mature. Well, no, they're not. Because what happens when you're watching the adult entertainment shows, you're being fed information. And a lot of times, this information, I've seen this myself, it, inf it influences the way you think about what's going on in the world. So in other words, the adult shows are actually pulling the wall. They're, they're preventing you from seeing what's going on. They're, they're a distraction from the reality of what's actually happening. Even though you think these shows are real and so on and so forth, they're basically uh, nothing more than uh, Daffy Duck uh, in a cop uniform. I mean, Daffy Duck, if you go back and watch the old uh, uh, Merry Melodies and the Looney Tunes from Warner Brothers with Daffy Duck in it, Daffy Duck would go up as uh, Sherlock Holmes or the Lone Ranger, slap people around for a bit, and... and always get the wrong person and uh, Porky Pig would come behind and uh, get the right guy <laughs> you know near the end near the end near the end of the episode and that's kind of that's that's the standard format for all cop shows you go to any cop show they go up they stop guys around for a bit they always get the wrong guy in the beginning and they finally get to the right guy at the end and it doesn't matter what the cop show is it doesn't matter how much science is there the CSA any of this stuff it's always slap the guy around Get the wrong guys that you slap around, and then finally near the end you catch the right guy. <laughs> that's the standard MO for these these shows, and that's not for me. My view, my choice is Kitty's Mama, Bertelli, uh, Jesse, uh, Ant Farm, most of the kid stuff. That's where my choice is because you know it. Who cares if you add some swearing into it? I don't I mean I don't care if you're saying <laughs> you fuck or whatever. I mean that's not entertainment to me. I don't care. That doesn't make it more entertaining for me. I don't care if you take your clothes off. I mean, that's not more entertaining to me. So what happens is that the entertainment is where, for me, where it lies it's in the reality of Kitty's Mama. It's in that reality of these shows. So, and it's time to go over to the next segment. <laughs> I will do this again. Reset this. Technical issues, technical issues, technical issues. Reshooting this segment because there was something wrong with the last one. Um, what was I saying? I'm talking about I'm talking about the reality of TV shows. Most adults, when they talk about TV shows, they want to have shows that are more mature than the kids shows. Oh, the kids shows are so stupid in terms of well, it's for kids and not for adults, and therefore everything in there is going to be very immature. And they expect their TV shows to be more mature. But the thing, as I demonstrated in the last episode, in the last segment, they're not more mature. I mean, the only difference between an adult uh, a CSI show and Daffy Duck is uh, there's more nudity, there's more swearing, and that's it. That's the only difference. The plot between Daffy Duck and CSI is exactly the same. The only content difference is, is you'll have some nudity, you'll have some violence in there, you'll have some swearing, and that's it. That's the only difference. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean, how does this justify or, or or make things more intelligent? And the same thing goes goes for uh, for most of the comedians on YouTube. I mean. They're not more intelligent. They, they, most of the stuff they, they, they talk, they, they, these these comedians, they think, oh, I'm being so sarcastic. I'm being uh, a satirist. But yet, if you look at, as I talk about, you look at what's going on and what's actually happening in the real world. You do the research and you're trying to figure out what's going on. 
you'll feel you, you'll realize that a lot of this these so-called satirists on YouTube, these comedians, are talking about absolute crap. They're not. They, they have no idea what they're talking about. They're actually part of the machine. And if you're talking about this machine that's trying to create this uh, this propaganda, to create this utopian society where oh, don't worry about it, the government. The, the government's going to take care of everything for you, uh, and, 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 and you know, and pull the wool over your eyes. Well, you know what? These comedians are part of it because when you go and research and you can sit down and take a, take a serious look at what's actually going on, these comedians are completely off. They're wrong about these different, different things. And, and in terms of their subject. And that's, in other words, their comedy is not satire. Their comedy is mocking. And all these people are doing is getting up there and mocking people. And then they, they, then they turn around and say, well... You know, uh, we support that you shouldn't be uh, uh, bullying, you, you know, the, the bullying awareness week and stuff like that. As they're mocking people, right? They, they, they stop mocking people for a bit, get up and do their uh, P4A, their, their uh, project for awesome, and say, yes, you shouldn't be, you shouldn't be making fun of people. You should, you know, you shouldn't be bullying people. And then they'll stop. They'll do. They'll stop and turn around and, and go back to their mocking again. And that's all they do. That's that, that's that's their. <laughs> so, when it comes to shows like Bertelli. Uh, Katie's Mama and all the kids shows that are on um, on YouTube, uh, Disney Channel, uh, Nickelodeon. Uh, I have no problem stating that you know I watch them. I have that I have this recess. Re this recess. I mean, it, it's all right for well, the standard geek does have a recess. And the thing is, I don't mind being lumped in with the kids uh, because as I said I don't find any difference in the content uh, in terms of, in terms of the complexity. As a matter of fact, I find because kids shows can't have a lot of uh, questionable material in it that they actually can put more stuff in there. I mean, it, it, and I, I, from what I'm seeing is a lot of the jokes that are in the kids shows, and the reason why people, some kids, some adults don't like kids shows, they don't understand the comedy in the kids shows. There, there's stuff in there that it completely goes over their head. I mean, if you're not an opera fan. And the kids' show makes reference to the opera Il, pa Il, Il Pagliacci, which is basically a a an opera about a clown. Then you're not going to get it. And the thing is, in in Jesse, when the when the you have with the, the fat butler there, there is a reference. There are in the show. There is a reference to Il Pagliacci. If you don't know the opera Il Pagliacci, you're not going to understand that 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 joke. In other words, that joke is going to go right over your head. And there are so many there are so many things like that. I mean, in the in the uh, Sweet Life of Zach and Cody, a lot of people say, "Oh, I hate that show. I hate that show." Yet yeah, that show has featured. Uh, the operetta, the operetta from Gilbert and Sullivan. Who are Gilbert and Sullivan? They are again. You have to know, you have to know opera. You have to know uh, the, the, what an operetta is. And if you don't know operas, you don't know operettas. Then you're not gonna know who Gilbert and Sullivan Gilbert and Sullivan are. And then that joke, that bit of comment, is gonna go right over your head. You're not gonna even get it. And so this this is sort of what. Uh, the, the the state of the situation is right now. So I think uh, in the last few minutes here, uh, I'm gonna do the next segment. And the next segment is gonna be the last segment. It's gonna be very short, and this will sort of finish everything up. On to the next one. Uh, what's the best idea you've ever had? Uh, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> the best way to answer that is that more often than not, the best idea I've ever had often not turns out to be something the worst. Often turns out to be the worst idea I've ever had. It never actually goes. The things that I think are the best ideas never actually work out to be the best ideas. It's the things that I don't necessarily expect to be good ideas that end up turning out to be good ideas. <laughs> That's kind of the way it works. Uh, the most embarrassing things your parents have ever done. Uh, I think it's kind of a. Uh, a toss up because what happens is that the parents and embarrassing teenagers is kind of the revenge for you as a four year old embarrassing your parents, saying things that you shouldn't be saying. You know, the lack of censorship of a kid. Uh, the kid comes out and says something, oh no, no, not, you know, the parents are all embarrassed, you know. And so, what happens is that uh, parents embarrassing the kids is kind of the, uh, the, the, the yin and the yang of the whole thing, the balance. Uh, if you're only allowed to pick one career 
for the rest of your life, what would it be? Well, let's hear. Uh, I'm a librarian and a, and an astrophysicist, so I'm in the I'm in the career I want. To, I'm in the one career that I want to be in for the rest of my life. Uh, because this is going to last forever. This is a career that will actually take me into my afterlife, right? I have a second life afterwards. I have a soul. My soul is supposed to be immortal. I'm in the career path, the direction that I want to be going into. When I get to my afterlife, we're going to get to my second life, uh, which is going to be immortal. So uh, I can't ask for anything better than that. Is, is it perfect? Is it hunky-dory? No. But it's uh, enough to say, yay. Anyways, uh, this is going to be the last segment. This is it for uh, uh, the BTS vlogs for uh, whew, the weekend BTS vlogs, which is, I think, 13th to the 16th. Anyways, I'll see you in the next BTS vlogs. It will probably be on the road. Okay. Bye-bye. And Merry Christmas. Democratic Earth. Earth.